Namaskar, very good afternoon. I think after that sumptuous lunch, I'm sure people are transported to another part of the world. But I think as a gesture of grace, we have deep time, so you can take your nap if you so wish. <laughs> All right, so after beautiful events that we saw in the morning, repeating this very grand hall, I want to bring you down to the foothill architecture and sticking to the theme of uh, many these refuse, reuse, regenerate, etc. etc. So I want to run you through Focus. different schemes Picking. of intervention and different approaches to this. So it's not just one or the other, and it's more as a matter of discussion amongst the professionals with this enlightened gathering, and I'm honored to be here with you more in terms of a debate. So, uh, so time has been a cyclic phenomenon in our Indian psyche where we believe in the cycles of construction, destruction and reconstruction. We believe anything that exists perishes and what perishes gives way for something new. To me this concept brings in the element of hope that things are not gone forever because we think that cyclic doesn't mean a static merry-go-round, it's, it's helical, which means there is evolution implied. And it is that, I think, what we can look for, that the way we look at avatars, we look at every kind of thing which rebonds, but it rebonds with the kind of uh, vengeance in a sense, that it improves the thing, it has an evolution implied in that. And it is that aspect, I think we learned a lot through any adversities. I think that concept of hope says that adversities can become an opportunity, it's like blessing in disguise, and it's up to us, how do you turn that around? And we saw recent pandemic uh, brought things, I think it was a great equalizer. It taught us humility, frugality, sustainability with how minimum could we do that, how optimally we use space over and over and many such things, living with nature and in harmony. We thought we were too many on the planet and it's irreversible, nothing could be done to that. Same number of people, but if unwanted system, undue systems were taken off the planet, I think nature corrected its own course and that's again a hope that we have got. So in this moment, can we take a pledge that how do we turn calamity, the constraint into a challenge and that as an opportunity, what are the kind of approaches we need to take? Uh, as an architect, we are triply responsible. What we create arguably lasts beyond us and therefore even our mistakes may perpetuate. Secondly, as you can see, building industry accounts for very large portion of energy consumption, resource consumption, and also equally large pollutants that come out of us. So, so and thirdly, we always are alterer of the existing landscape, and therefore we need to be responsible for that. So, for this, and again, I mean, what pandemic has taught us is, can we rethink on the norms and standards that we have been using? Because that, any at times, becomes the culprit for unduly having to spend. For example, there was a study done in Japan that uh, if the senior executives were relieved of their ties, tuxedo, and their formal dressing, they would feel the same level of comfort with informal dressing without having to jack up the AC. So it was undue dressing which was the culprit to having to have ACs of a much cooler kind of temperature. So if Mr. Mohanlal or people from the, uh, you know, uh, coastal region, if they are bare-chested, are they primitive or they are the most appropriately dressed for the context? So we knew Gandhi, Shashwat Gandhi, who knew when to unveil and veil. So we need that or we need Gandhi to do a line when it's cool in summer or hot in winter, so on. So. When we borrow it from the wrong standard, we end up into such disasters, you know, which is alien to us. Even if you need it, you don't have to advertise it on the thing. So a holistic architecture needs to go through five fundamental parameters. That's timeless aesthetic because it's going to be lasting longer. Social cultural appropriateness because you're always doing for someone and it has to fit not only to his ways of life but also the aspirations. Then environmental sustainability because resources are frugal and people are too many. Economic affordability without that it won't be viable. And of course the structural strength because it has to withstand for the time span. Now if that is the idea of a holistic architecture, is this what as an approach, it's to me too quick, too singular. If child is uh, 
dirtying the attire while crawling around the floor. You don't design the attire like a mop that let him go around and clean the floor. And I mean, as an architect, we do many such theses, and then to solve that, we do our PhDs. <laughs> Can design not add a value? That's the point that, you know, if you, it can be a value in terms of economics, it can be humor, it can be beauty, it can be whatever sort of way. And that's what the component of design is about. And that's where I think thinking beyond. For example, talking of Haftaras, one of the short-lived, this IT artifacts. And if you think of its second use, so that it's also incarnated. And this thought began long back. This was well bottle called Vogo by Heineken beer that after you go high in the spirits rather than throwing the bottle, they design the bottle in a squarish form with serration so it can become a brick in the wall. So with those kinds of uh, expectations from the professional, what are our responsibilities and they're all reads that you can make uh, into it. So first one is to refuse. You know, what gave us liberty that in the hotels or in some of these institutional corridors or even in the, I mean, you have doubly loaded with a, even in a daytime, no light and ventilation and view. So that in daytime, if you have to depend on artificial system, that's a crime. Using light is not a problem. But having taken the first steps, so if you can say no, that no undue electricity or mechanical dependence when there is a natural possible approach. You know? So that's what refuse means. It's not to compromise, but undue liberties that we take. Like who gave us license to have toilets not ventilated naturally? Earlier, you know, student would have failed. That was the first thing you have to understand. So this is from the smaller scale to the little larger. I want to travel through. Here was uh, an intervention, just like a small installation in a slum. This uh, gave us the United Nations citation, which was simply that when you have urban area slums, they use long, deep houses, but unlike traditional houses, there's no courtyard. So end up being three sites shared with the neighbor, and therefore last homes are invariably pitch dark. So the only way to address that for natural day and light uh, ventilation was uh, one of the very quick solutions was to have a pearl bed bottle, which unlike me has a thin waist and you can just push it into a small uh, corrugation hole. And that with internal reflection would glow like a bulb of 60 watt equivalent. So this is no cost solution, but of course this doesn't have ventilation. So we created something with a local kind of uh, NGO help, which was called Ujasi, light and ventilation. So as you can see, it's a translucent uh, dormer. And the benchmark was that this fits into the typical economic framework within which they buy their roofing stuff. And just with this, more important is these are the results post-occupancy. For one year, there was a scientific reading done and about several hundred homes, both in Gujarat and in Madhya Pradesh, where it was installed with the Seva group as an NGO. And we found that over a year, consistently, minimum saving of 200 or 250 rupee per month per family electricity bill reduction because at least in the afternoon they didn't have to use electricity. Then because of the ventilation they're fanning and also got reduced. So that was one. Because of that they could work for longer hours so about 1500 rupee per month was their additional home-based economy or income. So that was the way the quality of life was changed. Because of this, the stress level on the eye and health was reduced, so health portion improved. And indirectly, even the children could now sit inside the room and do their homework, so education in the exchange. These are all kind of uh, recorded over. So just a small intervention and a huge uh, change in quality of life. From refuse to reuse, and that's where I say that this is something we have known traditionally too well. This one installation which was at the Gandhi Ashram done to show alternative sanitation and over time this didn't sort of uh, need its purpose. So this was transformed into a kind of a seating area and this has been one of the thing to change the mindset called Pakhane Pe Khana. This is just to change the mindset. Whenever we toilet, uh, our reflex is to shut the nose. As against Gandhi said that that's a place you get the fresh ideas and it should be clean. 
Why should somebody else scavenge behind you? You should be doing your job. So just to change that mindset, we used all the kind of recycled material from what you otherwise find in your wash area has been used here as a kind of a restaurant. And this has been floating around as 20 weird restaurants, including that from the gully traps and whatnot. Reusing also the spaces, uh, as told earlier, how could you revitalize the heritage or the old resources that are there. This happens to be just about 70 years, Mr. Prabhu's years, very legendary building, but you can see as dilapidated it was. So we not only restored it, but put it to a sympathetic use again. And this uh, arguably was the first and the only city museum then from the contemporary times, talking about culture, craft, architecture of the place. Uh, so this was, and also these are the arts and uh, cultural connotations that go with the city. Then reuse to reduce. Uh, so again, the kind of norms that we can rethink post-pandemic to go back to with how minimum you could. So this is one of the IT examples, it's now interiors, and in that, reducing the electricity consumption unduly demanded by not opening the window in the fair weather or even by unduly illuminating places. So the simple planning or the design virtues that were applied here, no rocket science, and they could reduce their electricity consumption to nearly 50%. This uh, had won us the Immersion Cup Award. By simple common sense principles, so there was nature-inspired detailing, it was open plan. In fact, we have a very high sky component. So inventing light is not even a problem. We have to, in fact, diffuse light. We need ray bands here rather than having to illnessly include the light. Uh, then redefine, you know, we can always learn and reintroduce it for its given context. This is one residence uh, that's recently there on the build of five platform where it was a father-son thing, but even for the affording person, the concepts need to go there. So right from cavity and ventilated cavity idea to natural mutual shading, then microclimate through water and vegetation, water harvesting. In fact, the courtyard itself is a harvesting tank, south versus north, this kind of shading that you do, and the way, uh, you know, they shape, then the kind of massing, etc. Natural palette of material used by large list maintenance, uh, that is even if you consider concrete, and zero false ceiling. All this undulation that you see is a ground modulation and a ceiling modulation in the sectional profile of the building. There's absolutely no, for example, here, this one rises up and that becomes a bed on top and likewise. So even the space optimization. And as you can see, this is the courtyard. And courtyard has been given a contemporary interpretation. Nobody wants today the water to come in directly or the birds or the security. So you maintain the principle of the courtyard from the traditional architecture. So it allows light ventilation, it breathes. And yet you can use it as an internal space. Uh, same thing, I don't think chimney, I mean, we, it's a, companies have been very successful marketing chimney to an Indian cooking. But here it's a skylight. So directly above this, you can see the glow of a natural light. It gives you beautiful, you know, diffuse light all through the day. And hot air smell and smoke escapes out. The heat escapes out through a natural ventilation principle of convective nature. So this is the kind of kitchen. And then the dynamics of light. That's a ferrocement roof and the sleet over there. So east and west light. So there's a glow over the ceiling. It kind of relieves the volume and you can feel or you can be invited to get up, etc. And this is a puncture in a direct uh, way onto the dining area. So as the sun moves, you have this bird changing the direction. So it's also the dynamics of it. This is uh, open. So even from inside, you're connected to outdoors. Most of the spaces are non-air conditioned. The brief here, Trust me, the first two sentences were 100% air conditioning and totally vitrified tile and all those, no natural material. And riding along along the process, they themselves say, this is all quota stone even in a affording house, and it's selective you know, air conditioning, not in common area, only in few bedrooms. Uh, then we try to integrate local craft as much as possible because that's a patronage. If we don't give, this is going to die. So most of the buildings have this. This is also very unique. You can't replicate the same anywhere else. So this is Varli Pelche. There is also floor inlay and few 
digital or local graph as well as digital art. So that's the way kind of building becomes responsive on several fronts, uh, from passive uh, pooling to integration of art craft, water harvesting, etc., etc. Then to respond to the given context. For example, from individual residents to now standalone building, this is one of the corporate buildings, a small one. But uh, if you see this, the whole form or the response to various directions is accordingly how the facade manipulates itself. For example, southwest, we are faced with this dichotomy. Southwest is very good for breeze, but very bad for sun. So how do you resolve that? So this is vertical lure is a sort of external skin. So you can operate the air, but not the glare. This is north facade in a kind of a crossword puzzle, which is a natural punctured jali. It's a contemporary jali, you can say. While the, you know, vegetation and the uh, south facade has a smaller hole. These are replicated from the heritage structures of Ahmedabad as a reminder of where you are, etc. So the whole thing has generated out of the orientation and the demand on the function of the place. Then to recycle, this is coming to a small institutional scale. This happens to be right in slum and most of the women and most of the people's livelihood was to pick up the rack, distribute it, and I mean, sort it, and then sell it to the next person. So here, using that as a resource, an idea was that this itself can become a demonstration for the local people to even apply it in their home. So it's not a very high-tech alternative, but it's a good transformation of the kind of municipal and the domestic waste that you get. For example, Ahmedabad city alone produces 2,600 metric ton of waste every day. And ironically, over 10 years where it's simply being piled in one place called Pirana, trust me, it has become 70 feet, seven story tall mountain of Kachra. Okay, So that's the way waste is disposed. So here was one attempt where such kind of waste, and we've done actually three year extensive research with nine volume of output to decide what you can call a waste. If something is being used for a better purpose, you don't use it. But something is not effectively used, how do you add value and transform that? So that's the kind of palette we used and turned it into these building components. All of them had been tried with error and corrections, but all of them went through a rigorous taste in terms of the carrying capacity, in terms of no inert material and all that. So it was not, they were made guinea pig in the name of it. Our benchmark was that it has to cost within the same range that they might have been buying another alternative material, but it should be not only matching that cost, but arguably better in terms of performance and aesthetics. So that's a way, and with the help of local people, so that's the technology to come in. For example, a simple, actually illegal, thin micron, less than 150 micron bags, which are plentifully available, but if you braid it like a choti, then it becomes a rope, which is a value-added product, sold at certain rupees per meter and so, same way rack sandwich. Then flash break, Ahmedabad has electricity company. They were urging to get rid of that ash because for one year, if they can't throw it out, they have to shut the plant. So it is flash break with certain percentage of uh, binders. Then waste residue from the dump fill site, we took out the inert material and with a little binding of seven. This turned out to be 50 paisa cheaper, three and a half versus three at that point in time. It is more stronger, le more uh, less porous, and therefore without plaster, it can stay for. It's been there for 17 years now. And uh, this one is one-fifth the cost, although it's not as strong, but it's strong enough to take its own weight as an in-between wall. Then soil block. So this was done as a demonstration, various kinds of walling options, various kinds of, uh, and they've been all kept exposed for all these years. So soil block with 5% cement as a binder. Wood, wood is terribly expensive, but crate wood being brittle, it's only used for burning. So here with the local carpenter, we change the detailing. We don't nail the glass. So the same way, there was a little framework done, and these battens were put in, and it became a nice wooden partition between the classroom. Plastic bottle with very high tradition of recycling, we don't necessarily get even five pesa for a water bottle. And you would have how many? I mean, in US, there was a statistic 1,500 bottles per second gets thrown out uh, in the whole country's uh, geography. And so here we tried doing this where 
the typical empty put, pet bottle widows from the settlement in the evening sitting at their home you know, platform singing bhajan with simple thumb pressure, fill it with inert material and then it becomes equivalent of a brick in the wall. So what fetches no value here becomes at least two and a half rupee equivalent of a brick. The women earn some maybe measly meal equivalent of employment. So, and of course it improved the environment. So one solution that touches on betterment of environment, touches on higher income generation for the people, and of course transformed one can have a value added product for as an option rather than having cardboard walls or things like that, which is the alternative which we are competing with. Uh, same way Ahmedabad and Gujarat, they may be dry city and state respectively, but there are enough liquor bottles to be found. In fact, we had to do one small demo in Delhi and we had to export it from Ahmedabad, you know, because it was more familiar to get it from. So this is uh, those kinds of bottles. So they were put first and mind you, each one has its own character. So it's not just anything anywhere. That's where your design responsibility comes in. For example, we all know that western sun is too low and no amount of overhang would cut it out. So if you put it on the west, it will diffuse that light. And therefore, this is the example of a western facade done accordingly, which also helps in glowing it with internal reflection. It becomes a very exciting kind of a, a internal uh, glow in that sense. And uh, I mean, this also has been used in farmhouse. It's not for Dukhi architecture alone. I mean, it's just an approach and appropriately it can be used in many places. Then we became a little bold to just stick it together in an octagonal uh, this thing. So you got a jali out of it because that one was solid. So we said that we can even have the breeze. So therefore, west and southwest. So that's been in the center. Uh, then the roof. So this is a filler slab example below neutral zone. You can fill it with any inert material and the range of this is demonstration from brick to plastic bottle to water bottle to some other component including digital waste. So each of these extension, it went through five extensions over time and each extension we added a pallet of waste so to say. So to begin with first the dump fill site kind, then the second end material from the building construction or demolition site, then the digital waste, etc. So here you can see this is in a crash. So, you know, when both parents go out to labor, who looks after the young child? So there are again the local nannies who take that turn and they get employed accordingly and the kids. So kids being in a crash, sleeping like that, the ceiling becomes a little more interactive, maybe slightly garish, but it had those diyas as well as the digital ways. This is a fiber reinforced uh, FRP, but FRP minus glass wool. Instead, it has a rack sandwiched uh, fibers or it has uh, cloth and things like that. Uh, then from the scrap material, this was an interactive door done to the crash. So they can actually have sound, they can actually use this the, based on the scrap that we got. This is the CDs uh, which has become a paneling for the door. Then, uh, you know, our wrappers, Cadbury kind of uh, covers, they are neither paper nor plastic. The simple rule is that anything that makes sound is not a plastic. So even from a sorting side it comes back. So those shavings have been used to substitute glass wool to become FRP. This is a crate window, this is paneling out of crate and this is altin container opened up to become a paneling material, louvers out of that, ventilators. Uh, out of that. Uh, then second hand material put by, it's like for example, I wanted one more black piece that was not available. So based on what was there, some interactive flooring for the young kids. Uh, we also did paver block where typical block out of all those combinations, but before you cast, if you put the, you know, second hand tiles from this bathroom waste or tile waste, you could get this so-called mosaic embedded in that and this worked out to be much cheaper than either the mosaic or cheapest roof tile that you can get. Uh, even the space is used multiply over time so that you have morning as a school for young children, afternoon it becomes a kind of, a, you know, skill based and digital skill oriented classes, there is a crash through the day. And in the festivities, weekend, it becomes a community center. So all people come together. 
then reinterpret uh, this is satire though so this was using the traditional wisdom in a contemporary building so all those principles of passive electricity or uh, well, passive cooling etc so first one is a checkered board pattern so that you get courtyards and that becomes an outdoor room so you don't have to build too much for example this place has conducted 2000 people activity several time including when president uh, abdul kalam came to inaugurate but there's no space that can physically as a room hold more than 150 people so outdoor spaces count for living spaces etc so integrating built with unbuilt and that like for example this is a equivalent of a badminton court but that becomes a virtue of surrounding walls a sort of another space below that is a water harvesting tank uh, land as a reproductive resource so before you planted the first brick you had the vegetation on there and there also fruit bearing and seasonally varying so this site when we took was eight to nine inches below the adjoining road because the road came later and this is a farmland so without import or export of even a fistful of site uh, soil we just dug up by cut and fill simple logic whatever we dug up we planted in the rest of the area so now we are nine inches above without even import of fistful of soil from here or taking from outside and that became a natural sub subterranean uh, space for insulation then common sense that south west it projects out you go to any vernacular house form of course of Ahmedabad the ground floor then the upper floor projects more the second floor more and roof even more so when sun is overhead entire facade is in the shade so those kinds of principles and we figured out with simple no software calculation of the solar azimuth that what was an optimal projections and we got that uh, then um, double kind of cavity wall construction ventilated so that even the heat doesn't transmit as a kind of static uh, element the convective principle ensures that they go up. multiple use of space uh, and uh, interactive elements etc vegetation in and out so there's nowhere you feel that you are in the room so to say then restore this is now coming to the settlement scale this was post earthquake 26 January 2001 21 years ago this was the kind of major earthquake that happened in the region of Kutch in Gujarat but the people had amazing self-esteem they were extremely skillful and their houses that they built themselves you could not isolate their craft culture art and architecture they're so intertwined and the traditional bunga as it's called is a circular form of house like this in local clay mud which stood all the pressure of earthquake and, and somehow in the kind of frenzy of steel um, and the RCC frame it was first discarded as an earthquake resistant there was a representative we did some models making the houses and afterwards it was accepted as an earthquake resistant. so we wanted to retain the local craft art and in fact turn this as an opportunity for them to earn through other means as well so this was where when the Virat Kai compressive strength material gave way but then the you know these things withstood all of those the enough scientific reasons I'll not get into right from its form materiality thickness slow slenderness ratio and all that jamming so we did this interactive process because it was the people who were displaced and they had to be rebuilt uh, for so we allowed them number of choices so for example we prepared just for their visualization and our ego as an architect so we played first an architect to create a layout with them sitting around which is what we created on the left to make it a little more organic in between intimate spaces they laughed at it and they said okay you are an architect but can we do like this so they actually played a game this is the plot the names are written on that and they actually said we would like to be here so and so cannot face this side we have five brothers we want to share a compound and likewise so we allowed them to place themselves then our ego was hurt so we even came back saying that yes we think that you want the linear cluster like this but how about an angan how about an open space where your daughters can be married etc i said okay you are an architect but you seem to have some brain so we'll accept it so that's how the whole thing then you don't understand so that's how the process went that theodolite when we want to transfer that we found people had started shifting their stuff so that meant two positive things, their acceptance of what was happening and their comprehension of what was where. Then the, 
model doesn't give an idea of a scale. So, of course, we oriented it on site to understand that decisions were right. And then we pegged one plot with four corners over there. And this, because initially they said, you come from Ahmedabad, you're Kanjus, you have so much of land where you're giving it so much, which was one and a half times the largest plot originally. But then when we showed this, they said, itna sara hai, that's thik hai. Ahmedabad ho par chayad narmada ka pani piya hai. Then the local, where, from where we dressed the soil, we had identified a little depression, from there we dressed the soil. It's still sun-dried and kind of block pressed. I mean, 10 youth prepared 3,000 block every day, which they earned livelihood to build their own house. Local, they knew this technique of how to bind it, etc. the clay strata. They started organizing their own house so they would build the best they can as they want. And, as a, and they earned their livelihood also by doing labor, and youngest of the family learned from the wisdom of the oldest, uh, so that this know-how traditionally which would have died is now transferred to next generation. As you can see, that 12 or 13 year old boy knows how to do this complicated roof. And in fact, we have hired after some 15, 18 years, some of them to do some houses somewhere else as well. So it became a building skill as another source of employment for them. And then this was done, and mind you, this was 75 rupees a square foot then, which was one-fifth of 350 as a benchmark cost that government had set aside. So it was one-fifth the cost. It was in, involved in people. And look at this, that it is one of the most beautiful interiors. You know, it's sort of for which Amitabh Bachchan says, come to have Kushbu of Gujarat. And this is one of the tourist places where now they have homestays. So they charge you 600 rupees a day for offering their places. So it's again added feature for them. Each one had a unique kind of uh, expression. And we also, with the NGO, could help them continue with their craft and market it around. These are the interiors, and each house has a unique interior. This is all part of 75 rupees square feet. This not only expresses their culture, belief, etc., but it's also scientific. When it's a desert climate, 52 kind of temperature it can go up to, and kind of blizzards coming in. So that not only circular form, but you want minimum aperture for the window, etc., so that vagaries from outside don't translate in. So with small window, at the same time, you don't want to be gloomy inside. So this is white clay naturally, and there are mirror inside, so it reflects as much that it can. So even with the small aperture, it's not gloomy. And then, of course, there will other amenities, etc., put in. There's also a chance to introduce something new, that women used to inhale the smoke of the, you know, wood or the charcoal that they burned, and they had lung-related diseases. So this is a simple intermediate technology of ventilating chula, smokeless chula, and even in a decentralized way, a solar panel to at least have one room electrified. And with the rapport that it was able to build, they also expressed that there was used to be a dam which has got built, I mean, uh, you know, destroyed. So with the government help, we got the dam done, and that held a lot of water. And from there, we had dressed the soil in a natural way. It became a reservoir, and luckily, clay strata holds it for a good amount of months, so to say. And three inch of rainfall is the result that you see after. And because of water, without even our having to convince them, they started agriculture in the middle of desert. Before that, there was none. It was a drought, and they had to get even their grass for the fodder, uh, for the cattle from some, I don't know, 30, 40 kilometers away. And with water, of course, the culture also flourishes. Uh, and these are some of the post occupancy. This also had won us the Habitat Award. And why I'm saying that is that after 10 years of the earthquake, they asked us to go revisit the places and see what were the lessons and mistakes that we found. There's a whole chapter in that UN book. And uh, we went there, and some of these are later images where we were happy to see that they've continued, in fact, further building like this. When we went there, trust me, they said we want Sisoti planning and high-rise apartments. Sisoti society. That is how it started the dialogue. And now it's this, and now on their own they're building more because it gave them a lot of things. So you can see there is modern amenity, there's electricity, and still the culture has been retained. So restoring the culture and still regenerating the resources. So that's uh, more recent pictures. And finally, the regenerate in terms of the land, water, vegetation, which in terms are finite, but they can 
grow things. They can give you things. So this is our last project. It's a memorial for Cadilla Pharma. So it's not only for the have-nots, but this is an approach that can be applied. That 30-acre memorial is simply done with these five basic elements. And uh, like here, this is the point where he was cremated, the owner of the place. And whole thing he has a lot of uh, inspirational aspects, etc. There's not a single statue of him or a photograph of him. But what inspired him is what we have put it uh, here. And that Sri Yantra like thing that you see is uh, actually herbal plantation, what goes for health, you know, uh, health as well as for spiritual aspect. This is the place where he was cremated and therefore there's a dia as well as the calm water. And like the Kund of Madeira, you just sit around and mull and meditate. So there's no kind of, it's not overpowered by any sort of building. He said that you want to celebrate his life. So it's the water in different form, like 52 fountain around that meditation place, rather than a kind of samadhi kind of a roof. So it's just to give you that sound accompaniment. It creates a spatial definition with fountain going up, and you're just sitting here muffled by other sound. There's an exhibition area, but the whole thing is done in a way that vegetation, natural vegetation takes over. You can go all the way on top. There's, of course, amphitheater for cultural events. This is how that exhibition or the museum part uh, goes up. All natural stone, local stone, natural vegetation, natural modulation of ground, sun, and a lot of craft. This is from Mr. Mohapatra who passed away, but he had been afforded uh, Padma Vibhushan for his uh, craft and art. So it's all stone. And all of these have, like this is Dashavatar. So again, the cyclic notion of time, we wanted to say. All these perimeter, like a temple that you go, this is the vegetation there. Just in the circle, there are 89 plant species. All of them are having medicinal, because this was a pharmacy giant. So we took that as a stem, as well as they bloom in different times and the shortest to tallest vegetation. This is all from a barren land that you see in three or three and a half years. Uh, so there's water in different ways to calm you down, tranquil, flowing, uh, anti-gravity. This is all, 87 was the age that he died. The 87 Bhagavad Gita shlokas that have been inscribed to take away because he was a very ardent uh, proponent of Bhagavad Gita in his daily routine. So we took that. All is done in a naturally crafted stone. This is the life story of his. So as you walk on the ramp, it gives you the idea of what he got at what age, etc. So just to say conclusion, uh, glamour and beauty both catch our attention. But glamour is applique and temporal. It fades away like a fashion. When I was a student in the dinosaur time, there was bell bottom. I wore 44 inch flare, and I can see now that becoming a fashion coming in. So if we think that today we are fashionable, let's not forget that it was already there long ago. But beauty is integral and therefore it's timeless. And I believe our design intervention ought to be that timeless beauty rather than what's in vogue, Aspel Fox or Rai. I don't think that's a kind of formula. So the mantra I leave behind is inspired by yesterday and aspired for tomorrow. We talk of cyclic time, and I think we see after 100 years, what has changed is just what is in the hand, but it has not changed the human basic behavior or the psyche. So I strongly believe as space designer, as designer, we can empower to improve the quality of life. That should be the goal for any design endeavor to take up. So if you have that, like Gandhi said, that when you are in doubt what to do, this or that, think of the most uh, downtrodden person and see how it's going to affect them. So likewise, if you know that basically what your action is going to help to improve the quality of life, and design can be a great tool to do so. And just to do that, rather than giving Gandhian currency the value, we might have to make Gandhian value itself the currency. Thank you for your attention.